Hello and welcome to Nikolai's genetics lessons and today I have prepared two multiply choice questions for you. And as usual I recommend you to stop video here, read the questions, answers, choose your correct answers and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answers with my answers and explanations. So here is the first question, which of the following is the best example of the overdominance? So let's start with answer D. Two true breeding lines, one tall and one short produce all tall offspring. And this is classical example of the simple dominance. Imagine that we have parent who is going to be homozygous dominant, another one who is going to be homozygous recessive, and if we cross these two parents and build a Punnett square we can predict a genotype of the progeny. So all the progeny are going to be heterozygous. So if parent uh, on the top would be tall and this parent would be short, all the offspring would be heterozygous and all of the offspring would be tall as parent 1. Those genotype going to be capital A, small a. But because here we have example of the simple dominance, heterozygous would have the same phenotype as homozygous dominant. So this is what is uh, described here in answer D. So we can cross out this answer. This is simple dominance. And answer C, two true breeding lines, one tall and one short, produce offspring of medium height. And this is classical example of the additive trait. Example would be, uh, imagine that we have a dominant allele A that give 50 centimeters to the plant height and recessive allele A would give 25 centimeters to the plant height. Now, uh, when we have deployed homozygous dominant parent, his height going to be 1 meter. So, this is additive trait. One dominant allele at 50 centimeters, another dominant allele would add 50 centimeters. So, the total height of the plant would be 1 meter. Now, imagine that we have a homozygous recessive plant and one allele would add 25 centimeters, another would add 25 centimeters. So the total height of the plant would be uh, 50 centimeters. And uh, of course, if we cross these two parents of these two genotypes, all the progeny going to be heterozygous. So would have one dominant allele, another recessive allele. And dominant allele would give us 50 centimeters to the plant tallness. And recessive allele would give us 25 centimeters to the plant tallness. So total we would have 75 centimeters. So we expect that uh, when we have uh, additive trait that 100% uh, of the progeny, uh, the tallness would be about 75 centimeters. So we can cross out this answer and we left with two answers. Answer A. Two lines of true breeding white parents produce purple flowered offspring. And usually, as you remember, uh, in textbooks we have different example when two purple flowered plants uh, would produce offspring where quarter would be white flowered because uh, dominant allele would produce um, color and recessive allele would be mutated and wouldn't be able to produce color. So for example uh, this allele stands for the normal allele and this uh, would be a defective allele but uh, genotype would be uh, sorry phenotype would be normal because we have at least one normal allele and uh, when we cross two heterozygous plants one quarter of uh, such a cross progeny would be homozygous recessive so would have two defective alleles and wouldn't be able to produce color that's why we have two purple flowers and one quarter of the offspring would be white flowered because uh, as you see uh, both of the genes, both of the alleles would be defective. But 
quarter would be homozygous dominant and uh, quarter, uh, sorry, one half would be heterozygous and also would produce purple uh, flowers. So one quarter we expect to be white flowered. But in this example, as you see, we have uh, different variants. So how possible that two uh, plants that has defective alleles would produce uh, so we, you expect that them to be homozygous recessive. So how we can cross two homozygous recessive parents and uh, how it is possible that they would restore color and would have a progeny that would be purple flowered. And here is an example. Imagine that we have uh, one chromosome. Here is another chromosome. This is diploid organism. And here we have uh, one gene and the second gene and the second chromosome is going to be uh, the same chromosome, uh, one from the uh, uh, mother side, another from the father side. So, so this is going to be two homologous chromosomes. So we have here also two genes. So now we have two alleles for both uh, loci and uh, both two genes would produce proteins uh, that we call enzymes that uh, participate in production of purple color. Now imagine that this plant would be uh, defective for the uh, gene 1. So we have uh, gene 1 here and gene 2 here. So we'd have uh, both uh, alleles for this locus that is going to be defective. And of course, if uh, both these uh, genes and the products, proteins, enzymes would participate in production of the purple color, purple color wouldn't be able to produce because this, would, this enzyme wouldn't be active. And now imagine that we have different plant and this different plant has the same chromosomes and the same two genes, gene 1 and gene 2, but this plant would have defective uh, gene number 2. And he is going to be homozygous for, for this allele. So also this uh, plant wouldn't be able to produce purple uh, color. Those uh, gene number 1 would be normal and would be able to produce normal uh, proteins. Uh, gene number two, both uh, variants on homologous um, chromosomes would be defective. And when we cross these two plants, these two parents, we expect that parent one only can give uh, this variant. There is no other uh, variant, so uh, chromosome in the progeny would be as follows. So. Here we have two genes and gene number one would have a mutation and parent number two would be able to give any of these two chromosomes and genotype would be as follows. So once again two genes and gene number two would be defective. So gene number one, gene number two. And as you see uh, the progeny would be able to produce purple color because uh, one chromosome has a normal uh, gene 1 that would be able to produce normal uh, enzyme and uh, on the different uh, chromosome we have normal gene uh, number 2 that also would be able to produce uh, normal uh, protein, normal enzyme. So here we would be able to see purple color in this uh, progeny. So when we cross these two parents who is not able to produce purple color, 100% of the progeny would be able to produce purple color. So this wouldn't be example of the overdominance and we can cross out answer A and answer B two lines of true breeding tomatoes that are susceptible to the Verticillium wilt, a fungal infection, produce offspring that are resistant to the verticillium wilt. And this is going to be our answer. 
and uh, this is an uh, example of the heterozygous um, vigor or heterozygous uh, better fitness than both uh, homozygous parents. And another example would be um, sickle cell anemia, as you remember, uh, those people who has two normal alleles would be susceptible to sleeping disease and those uh, who has two uh, defective alleles would have serious genetic disorder and a very serious health condition. And uh, those who is heterozygous would be better fit than both homozygous parents and fitness of the heterozygotes would be higher and they wouldn't be affected with malaria and the survival rate would be better than any of the homozygotes. Another example would be uh, when we have two pure lines of the plants, that meaning that uh, we self-pollinate plant for the many generations and this plant become uh, homozygous all its loci and when we have two pure lines and we cross them together we are going to get hybrids and hybrids are bigger and more robust than parental generation that's uh, what we call hybrid vigor and that's why hybrids are in such demand and next question the recessive mutant allele that causes cystic fibrosis is much more frequent in Caucasians of Eastern European descent than in other populations. Some scientists believe that heterozygotes must have had survival advantage during plagues such as cholera that occasionally sweeps through this population. What concept does this illustrate? And now you of course uh, would be able to choose correct answer because this would be another example of the overdominance when heterozygotes would have better fitness than uh, homozygotes. So, uh, what the other answers? Answer A, multiple, meaning probably multiple alleles, and this is not exact uh, answer. Answer C, environmental influence, and this is also not true, because here we have a hint that scientists believe that this is caused by uh, genetic uh, reasons, and heterozygotes has better fitness. And uh, answer D, epistasis, would be example when we have, uh, for example, um, one trait, color of the uh, hairs, for example, and imagine that uh, one couple, female has uh, allele for the red hair and male has uh, allele for the baldness. So this is two different genes so the progeny, for example, uh, male progeny, wouldn't be able to express red color uh, of the hair because uh, he's going to be bald. So one gene would be epistatic to another one. And uh, we call this epistasis. And uh, red color in this example would be hypostatic. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.